Hello everybody and welcome to Let's Learn How to Play Sins of a Solar Empire Rebellion with me, Get Dave. If you are unfamiliar with this series, uh, but like games like StarCraft or Galactic Civilization or even Civ, um, I really recommend it. It's a good game. It has a kind of rough learning curve and bad tutorials and no campaign mode or anything like that, uh, which is really too bad. But it's still awesome, and I'm here to help you get over uh, the hump of learning the new game. So the very first thing you can do is you can go through these tutorials. When I completed them, I did not find myself super confident in exactly what I was supposed to do. They tell you how to do things, but you don't exactly build a context for what's a good idea. So you can do them if you want, but I'm going to try to cover all sorts of things that I'm going to do to try winning the game, and I'll explain why and the general order, and hopefully it'll help you get over the learning curve a little bit more. This is going to be one half Let's Play and two-thirds tutorial and one-quarter math. So the very first thing you want to do is click on Player Setup, change your name because it'll default to something. If you ever play online, that'll be no good. Pick a cool symbol. I like the yellow lion. Uh, and you can change your picture set. You have some degree. I don't know, some of them are nice. I like the one with the battle droid myself. That is the single most important thing you can do. Once you've done this, basically everything else will come easily. Okay, next up we're gonna go new game. Again, you can do the tutorials, but oh, let's just learn by doing. Um, I'm a big fan of smaller maps, and there's sort of a weird crossover where some of the medium maps are sometimes different sizes than the smalls. Uh, if you want a good starting map, I do recommend Chronax Cross as a good uh, starting one. I'm going to play on Doppelgangers because I think it will let me show off more of the game. So the next thing we got to do, we can look at the quick digression. We can look at these game options and victory options, but I'm going to leave them all in the defaults. Basically, we have to kill everybody is the, the long and the short of it. So, I'm going to pick my faction. This is the important decision to make. So, there's three main factions, and each one of them has a rebel and a loyalist uh, component. Uh, and there's typically fairly small differences between them. Each gets a couple different abilities and a different titan. Uh, most of their other capital ships and vessels are pretty much the same. Uh, different expansion packs kind of influence how true that statement is, but uh, yeah, don't worry about it. So tech are... Uh, a, a rough analog might be sort of halfway between the Terrans and the Zerg from StarCraft. Um, they have... A, they're a good early game faction in general. Um, Obviously, with playstyle and everything, you can pretty much contradict everything I say. But generally speaking, they're geared towards having quick-to-manufacture, cheaper, lower-power units, and you can have quantity with them. Never go into a fight with a tech having one-to-one -one, uh, odds against your opponent. If you're playing tech, you need numbers, because your ships are cheaper and you can have more of them, so you better have more of them. Uh, that would be the general thing. They tend to not rely on their shields so much as armor as well. Advent, um, there is a bit of an analogy between them and the Protoss from StarCraft. They tend to have slightly slower to build, more expensive units, um, but they're quite powerful. Uh, generally speaking, they would probably win a one-to-one -one fight against anyone else, is a general rule. Uh, the next faction we cover will maybe be a contradiction to that. Anyway, so <laughs> this is the Advent. They are my favorite faction. I find that their strengths sort of offset some of the weaknesses in the strategy I employ in this game, and I have the most fun with them. They're also kind of like a human offshoot, and they're all out for revenge and kind of lunatics, and I, I think that's kind of awesome. The Vasari are aliens. They have kind of alien seeming technology like a lot of their weapons partially pierce enemy shields and stuff like that uh, they also there's an interesting titan one of them has that uh, leech power leeches power from enemy ships so 
swarming them with a whole bunch of tiny vessels is basically suicide because this thing will keep sucking them all dry and kill them. You have to like fight it with bigger ships. So they've, they've got some kind of interesting things. And I would say they don't really map cleanly to the StarCraft analogy, which is pretty common in these games. They're not really like anything else in its aspect, but they've got pretty good firepower. They're, they're a solid choice. I'm gonna go with uh, the Advent Rebels, is uh, my preferred faction, so we're gonna go with them. And I'm gonna pair myself with, well, I say use the pair term pair loosely. I'm just gonna try picturing or, or picking some various uh, enemies. I'm gonna pick tech rebels. Um, I'm gonna be talking while I play a lot and be going slower, uh, or at least I'll try to, than I'm normally used to going, so I'm only gonna play on normal difficulty. Um, with the expansion, they upped they added quite a few levels. I normally can do pretty well on unfair. Um, I think I've even done cruel, but uh, anyway. You can also pick, uh, well yeah, we'll, we'll just leave it at this for now. This is a tutorial. And there are no teams, it's a free for all. Uh, I could set them, right clicking moves backwards in a menu, left clicking forward. I could set them to be the same team as me, but I'm not gonna worry about that. So the one thing I was going to mention is there's different uh, priorities you can give the AI, but we'll just leave it on random. That is, it's a fine choice. Okay, welcome to the start. You begin with a couple of scouts. So I like to right click on these uh, explore abilities. That puts them on auto explore. Generally speaking, I will let them do their thing. Uh, so yeah, Go they'll just run me. off and travel along these lines to scout out these various systems. You'll see there's four stars on this map. Each solar system or each star system is somewhat isolated. You have to research a technology that lets you jump from star to star before you can get there. Until then, we're just trapped in this solar system. And all the different factions are starting in different star systems. So we have a little bit of time to get ready. The next thing you really want to get started on is building a capital ship. Now, each faction has usually a carrier that carries fighters, um, one ship that helps with colonization, and I usually recommend building that one first, and, you know, some other fighters. And by fighters, I mean capital ships that are huge, but well suited to fighting. Has been Once you've done that, we can uh, click on our planet. So I got to that menu by just clicking on capital ships. We click on a planet, shows you different shortcut menu buttons you can press. So if I click on the one labeled capital ships, it's the biggest ship that gets me the menu. Your first one is free. After that, you pay. Frigates are the smallest ships. And I recommend just maxing out, just build a ton of the cheapest one that's not the scout. All right. You can also build this thing that'll help us colonize, but I generally don't rely on them. We'll deal, we'll deal with exceptions as they come up. This middle group, cruisers, are a bunch of ships we haven't researched yet, so we can't build them. All right. And we also should probably get started on building some structures. We start with two frigate factories, which lets us build the little ships, and one capital ship factory that lets us build the big one. One is more than enough to start off. Strength and unity. So our colony, or pardon me, our capital ship was built. So it can carry some fighters. So we'll start off. I recommend usually a fairly one-to-one -one ratio of fighters to bombers. Um, Bombers are bigger against bigger ships. And then, and so we just open the fighter menu to do that. It'll build them and then the fighters just sort of take care of themselves, which is great. Your ship also is ours. gains experience. All capital ships do, which are the big ones. So we can click on this star and give it an ability. And I'm always gonna go with the one that lets them colonize. Is it time? Click and drag. 
And I'm going to do one little shortcut for myself, which is pressing Control 1. And what that does is anytime I press 1, is it time? I will get command of that exact selection of ships. All right. When we look at planet developments here, oh, hold on. I can build a few more frigates. So I won't be able to build anymore, because up here, you can see the zero. That indicates that we've used all of our supply for capital ships. And we've used all of our su supplies for general ships. Every different ship requires a different number of supplies or capacity. Strength and, unity. and so each one of these, you can see it says uses four supply. Well, we only have two left, so we can't build any more of those. And we'll just let the last one get out. And I'm going to get started on Strength and unity. some temples of hostility and harmony. And I'm going to right click this to auto place structures. So how it works is all the planet's planet buildings are in orbit around it. And I don't really care where a lot of them go. So I just right click this so that the computer will just automatically place them. And I'm going to start with the temple of harmony. That'll let me research better things. What's on your mind? Each faction has basically a structure they can build that helps them research military stuff and another one that helps them research a sort of civilian and uh, economic Without stuff. Delay. So the Harmony Temple lets us have Speak your mind. civilian re research. I'll also show you that I started building this temple and then it grayed out all of these other things. We can't build them anymore because we've run out of logistics. The future is ours. Basically, if you want to build something on a planet, it's going to cost Say you money. No um, and it's going to cost you logistic slots as well. A colonizable if you don't have both, discovered. you can't build. The main resources in this the game are money, metal, and crystal. You basically gain all of them by having planets. Um, the more populated a planet is, the more money you will get. Uh, the more loyal a planet is, the more money you'll get. The other resources come from these extractors you can build. So if we zoom in on this other planet here, this asteroid, you can see in the summary in the bottom right corner, it had two metal asteroids floating around it and one crystal asteroid. I've sent my fleet there, Speak your mind. so we can go take it over, because I want it to be my asteroid. Who In the original the game, there weren't that many different types of planets. Now there's a few other interesting ones. So I also want our homeworld to have a higher ceiling our for the number of vessel er, things it can build. So I'm just going to increase the logistics capacity. That'll let me build more things in orbit around it. We can also worry about specializing it, which uh, gives us various benefits for more advanced structures. But we don't have to deal with that yet, so I'm not going to. All right, we can see our ships en are engaging. Basically, every system has pirates flying around. Your ships will fight reasonably well automatically. In larger encounters it'll become more important to give them manual instructions. The future is Our ours. capital ship could really help out those other guys, but when we researched Colonize, it was on by default. It was on autocast. I don't actually want to turn that off because I'm pretty happy about it. Another planet joins the oh, I want it to be zoomed out for that. You can see that planet has now highlighted. The capital ship A planted its seed. Has been discovered. When you colonize, you automatically lose money until you upgrade the infrastructure. So I recommend doing that right away. Um, a bonus the advent have is that when they colonize, is it time? With this capital ship, everything's cheaper by just a little bit to start off. So I'm also going to improve the logistics capacity. 
that's pretty much it for now. The other stuff we don't really care about. We just really want to upgrade the civilian infrastructure as fast as possible. Because right now we're losing money at a rate of 2.1 per second. And we could be gaining money. All things being equal, I prefer to gain money. Alright, let's go back to the home world. And we'll get working on this second Temple of Harmony. And I'm going to explain how research works. In one moment. We'll just take a look at our fleet. We Nobody died. Control. They're doing great. Um, we could fly around a little bit and clear out these other systems. You can see that when in the bottom right corner, when we went there, there was seven enemy ships. Uh, we would probably lose a couple of our vessels if we went to check it out. Speaking we can't actually colonize any of these planets now. Planet development complete. Very wise. We'll send them back to the home world for now. Now that we've uh, got two temples of harmony, let's take a look at the research tree. Stand so I do that by clicking on this uh, test tube and Erlenmeyer flask icon. Minus 10 points if you called it a beaker. So research is spread over six categories-ish. The last one, artifacts, is those are things you can find by exploring. If you look at the develop planet menu, you can explore a planet. Your home world is automatically fully explored. When you explore a planet, you might find something. I usually view it as kind of a desperation play. Finished. You've got maybe a 1 in 10 chance of finding something every time you explore, and you have no idea what it'll be, but they can give you different bonuses. Stuff like 10% more damage from weapons. That would be like one of the good things you can find. Most of them, well, considering the level of investment you have to make, they're, they're only so-so. Okay. The fleet logistics, you don't have to build any structures. It allows you to build larger fleets. We're not going to do that quite yet. Although we have so much money, it would be a good idea to do so soon. So our Temples of Harmony unlocked various levels of these two groups. So Harmony is generally concerned with upgrading, you know, things. Things that can make us money or things that spread loyalty. So I'm going to research one of them. And I'm going to start with the Unity Indoctrination. It lets us build a Temple of Communion, which basically lets us spread loyalty. It's a good thing. I'm also going to build one more Temple of Harmony here. Oh yeah, and the Extractors. I totally should have done this right away. That was a huge mistake. As soon as you colonize somewhere, build Extractors right away. So when you colonize, upgrade the infrastructure so you're at least not losing money. And then go under Logistics Structures and build yourself some Extractors. Those are going to actually help me get the resources I want. I'm also going to build a Temple of Harmony. <laughs> All right. Is it time? I'm going to send my fleet Destiny over here for now and then go back to talking about research again for a minute. So, there's also the understanding group and I'm going to research persuasive offers to two levels and it's because it's a relatively small investment and it's going to save us money later. Um there's pirates in this game. We found their nasty little hive of scum and villainy right here. It's crawling with enemies. If you take a look, 14 corsairs, 10 rogue, 3 pillagers. There's lots of enemies and every once in a while they will fly out and try killing someone. That's no good. Construction finished. Destiny unfolds. All right. Knowledge acquired. <clears throat> I'm going to send my capital ship through this jump point for now. Stand by for phase jump. And I'm going to research one more technology. I'm going to research volcanic evangelism, which is going to allow me to colonize uh, volcanic planets. Is it time? All right, the capital ship has jumped, so I'm going to send all of the frigates to follow him. What this has done is, and I'm going to turn off colonize. This is a bit of an exception to my general rule. 
What this has done is guaranteed that all of these fighters are going to go after the big ship first. Probably. That's usually how the AI behaves. Construction finished. And most planets are guarded by AIs. As a matter of fact, if you find a planet that is unguarded, it probably means someone else got there first. Alright, the fleet's going after that uh, long-range frigate first. That is a great decision. Usually you want to pick off the weak ones first. If you hold down, if you right-click on a unit, people will either try shooting it, or if it's a location, they will move towards it. If they can't um, shoot it, they will not move towards it at all. So that sometimes comes up if you don't have the right type of weaponry. The capital ship kind of shoots at everything, so you just let them do their own thing for the most part. The future is ours. Your time has come. They have some weapons that are exceptions to the rule. Capital ship's holding up. We've taken no losses because of our careful planning, so that's good. All right, we'll let them keep fighting it out over there. All right, knowledge acquired, everybody. Level one of persuasive offers, almost in time. Oh well, it'll be helpful very soon. And we have a ton of money. That'll also be helpful very soon. The Unity senses a pirate raid is inevitable. All right, and that brings us to the end of our first video. Um, we'll talk about pirates. We'll get more into research in the next one and why I was building all those temples. And uh, yeah, pirates, they're fun. I'll see you there, everybody.